everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Now the reason I went to two high schools, just so you know, is that uh, they built Fountain Valley High School and they didn't have enough kids to go there. So they changed the school boundaries when I became, when I was about to be a senior, so I had to go to Fountain Valley High School. So, you know, no barons, not go barons. So, anyway. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm passing around a handout that you can look at later. I'm sure you're going to read it in detail. Um, you know, I've been fooling around talking about deer antler drops and, you know, all those kinds of things uh, because I have mentioned a couple of times I really would like to have your attention and understand a little bit about what acupuncture and oriental medicine can really do for you and for your friends and family. And so, um, not that deer antler drops aren't the great end all for us baby boomers, but... Uh, <laughs> who are you it, calling a baby boomer? Uh, well, you know. You know who you are, okay. <laughs> so, um, but... Uh, and, and part of my focus actually is becoming more about anti-aging and age reversal and longevity. So that is kind of you know where, where we're headed. But I do treat families and children also. Um, but what I gave you here, October 24th, don't forget it, mark it on your calendars, is Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine Day. So I gave you the press release that, that is out. Um, released by the National Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine, uh, oh, excuse me, the uh, NCOM, excuse me, which is the national organization that certifies uh, the schools and the practitioners. And the reason that we're having uh, the National Acupuncture Day is to raise everyone's awareness um, about acupuncture and oriental medicine, but also to uh, emphasize the uh, importance of having the right practitioner. So that's a, kind of an important thing to know. Um, so I also handed you an acupuncture and oriental medicine fact sheet that does have a little table on it um, about what the World Health Organization uh, says acupuncture can treat, but there's a lot more besides the, what is on this page. So. Um, you know, a lot of you probably think that you come to an acupuncture clinic because of pain. Of course, I've heard a lot of you talk about your pain, and I haven't seen you, but, you know, you know who you are. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of internal medicine problems are treated very effectively with acupuncture. So, um, uh, in response to the public's increasing use of acupuncture and oriental medicine, um, and in response to the fact that there's a widespread um, movement to take the mystery and the, the, the unknown quality of acupuncture out of our, our thinking and change our conditioning. Um, the National Institutes of Health uh, developed a, uh, an office for alternative medicine. And so it's called the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. And they are the ones who are making sure that practitioners are going to a higher and higher level of care. So just so you know, the little letters behind my name, you know, not that I want to go with titles or anything, but um, my patients say, shall I call you Dr. Snyder or Dr. Mary? And I go, just call me Mary, that's my name. Uh, <laughs> we'll take the mystery out of that part. But the LAC means licensed acupuncturist. Licensed under the Department of Consumer Affairs, with, you know, which is a California organization. And DAOM is a rather new title. It's Doctor of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. Um, you'll see people out there with OMD behind their name, but it's not a recognized now title. They're going you know, for the DAOM. And uh, you'll see a lot of licensed acupuncturists if you're looking you know, for someone and you're not looking for me. <laughs> And that's okay, just so you go. But um, there's, there's a lot of LACs, but there's not a lot of DAOMs yet. But uh, many of the schools are working to get accredited so that they will be considered legal, not legal, but um, you know, highly qualified. And the school that I went to in Santa Monica <clears throat> for my doctoral, Emperor's College, is highly qualified and now one of the eight accredited schools in the United States. So, you know, the, and the focus of the DAOM program 
and the one that I took is integrative medicine. And what that means is we're trying to take what's been considered alternative medicine and have it become mainstream because the effects and the benefits from acupuncture and oriental medicine are you know, partially what you see on this little sheet, but also um, above and beyond what we see on the sheet. So, um, you know, we are uh, in a society where, you know, a lot of people are aging, and I want to just tell you this, that aging is normal, but decay is not. <laughs> so... <laughs> And a lot of people are thinking, you know, and I've heard many people say, you know what, I'm just breaking down, I'm getting old, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, you know, people, I'm 63 years old, I have seven grandkids, I don't think I look 63, I don't think I act 63, and I attribute a lot of it to the fact that I've had acupuncture for more than uh, about 14 or 15 years, and, you know, everybody else can do this too. So, you know, there's not one person that you know that does not need acupuncture, not one person. So, you know, it's a movement, it's a change, it's a change in our thinking, it's a change in our mindset, it's a change in our conditioning that is um, being pushed by the tide of uh, higher intellectual thinking that people are coming into. So, you know, all of us, uh, in a way, have a purpose, well, all of us have a purpose, and all of us should be working on our purpose. And um, if we feel well, and we are functioning well, we will be able to work to help everybody else. I know that sounds a little idealistic, but the truth is that there's no turning back. The tides are pushing us towards all of us taking charge of our health, being, uh, instead of being in the authoritative medicine, uh, sick care industry that has been our model for only, you know, 100 or so years, and going towards what we call uh, collaborative medicine, meaning that you are in charge of your health and your practitioner is the one who helps you get there. So um, that has been going on for more than 3,000 years. So, you know, 100, 3,000, you know, let's see where we find ourselves as we change our thinking, go back to our natural roots and um, see if we can uh, lower the cost of health care by preventing um, illness and disease and decay. So, anybody have any questions? Yes, Sean. How, how did you, you know, start up? I mean, it was obviously like a conscious decision to kind of get into this. Yeah, well, I had a family member who had cancer. And I had already been going back to school, you know, court reporter, sitting there on the little machine for a long time, you know, just producing transcripts and listening to everybody sue everybody else. Sorry, attorneys. <laughs> hey, Kim. <laughs> where, where bad things happen to good people. <laughs> but, you know, um, I knew there was more than that for me. So I had an interest. And when uh, the family member was getting chemotherapy and had a stroke, and we're all standing around, and the neurologist comes out and says, Yes, he's had a stroke, and we were just shocked. What do you mean a stroke? He, he has cancer. Oh, no. Uh, chemo patients have heart attacks and strokes all the time, is what the, the no, neurologist said. And it was like a defining mo moment for me because I thought, that is not right. How, nobody told anybody, you know, that person was uh, let go because they did not want to rehabilitate him because he had terminal cancer, so they didn't do anything about his stroke and he passed away in three months. So with that, I did a lot of research. I started reading, I started, I, you know, I dropped out of some of the classes I was taking and I went back and, you know, I dug deep and I found the consensus statement by the National Institutes of Health that says uh, acupuncture is uh, recommended for chemo patients to prevent heart attacks and stroke. And so right then and there I went, okay, I have to go do this. And so I did it, thought I was going to be doing it as a hobby. <laughs> and here I am. One more minute. Anybody else? Ron? Something like um, ADHD, how, how is that treated? Because it's like an ongoing issue and 
Yeah, um, we look at it as an imbalance in some of the neurotransmitters and um, also I believe that there's an imbalance in the energy flow um, possibly due, and this is my theory alone, uh, to uh, the widespread use of ultrasounds in utero and um, toxic chemicals that are put in the um, vaccinations and you know those types of things not that I'm saying to you know stop giving your kids shots but so with that the electrical system of the body is re-regulated by acupuncture to try to bring it back to its natural electrical flow where the organs the nervous system the brain everything is receiving the signals that the needles are conducting around the body it's basically electric uh, it's like uh, your electricity 101 or you know class that people would take so how that's that's a basic idea how to do it um, I do not take children off of their medication I work I <coughs> attempt to work with the family and with the doctor and what the family feels comfortable with so um, <clears throat> and of course we can we're talking adults too with ADHD so um, the medication can possibly be lowered um, with the doctor's permission or the parents you know working that way but I do think it's a modern day issue and so how are we going to adapt you know we've adapted for millions of years uh, to all the changes and our bodies have, are sort of a combination okay I'm gonna get dinged <laughs> anyway I can go on and on but um, anybody you know if you want to talk to me you want to come to my office for a consultation I do a free consultation so you'll know I'm not a voodoo woman and I actually have something to say and, and to help people okay thank you very much